reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, If someone has on his skin a scab, or a pustule, or blotch, which appears to be the sore of leprosy, he shall be brought to Aaron the priest, or to one of the priests among his descendants. If the man is leprous and unclean, the priest shall declare him unclean, by reason of the sore on his head. The one who bears the sore of leprosy shall keep his garments rent, and his head bare, and shall muffle his beard. He shall cry out, Unclean! Unclean! As long as the sore is on him, he shall declare himself unclean, since he is in fact unclean. He shall dwell apart, making his abode outside the camp. The Word of the Lord I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. Blessed is he whose fault is taken away, whose sin is covered. Blessed the man to whom the Lord imputes not guilt, in whose spirit there is no guile. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, my guilt I covered not. I said, I confess my faults to the Lord, and you took away the guilt of my sin. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you just. Exalt, all you upright of heart. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Avoid giving offense, whether to the Jews or Greeks or the church of God, just as I try to please everyone in every way, not seeking my own benefit, but that of the many that they may be saved. Be imitators of me, as I am of Christ. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. A great prophet has arisen in our midst. God has visited his people. Hallelujah! 
Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. A leper came to Jesus and kneeling down, begged him and said, if you wish, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand, touched him and said to him, I do will it, be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately and he was made clean. Then warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once. He said to him, see that you tell no one anything, but go, show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. He remained outside in deserted places. And people kept coming to him from everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. Here it is, St. Valentine's Day. St. Valentine, a martyr who died for the faith and his deep love of Jesus Christ. St. Valentine's Day and leprosy is the focus of our two readings. Our reading from the book of Leviticus shows us that the people of ancient times were extremely fearful of the disease. People were quarantined, segregated from other people, and banished to the margins of society. We can see some of those parallels in the world today as we wrestle with the pandemic. When Jesus comes on the scene in our gospel, he adopts a different approach. His approach is love. We cannot overlook the one subtle detail in this encounter. Jesus cured the leper by touching him. Now think about that for a minute. Jesus was all-powerful, and there are times in the Gospels where he performs a miracle with a simple word or a simple phrase. He didn't have to touch the leper. In fact, it was against Jewish law to touch a leper. A word or a wave of his hand would have done the trick. It would have fulfilled the law and been a lot more pleasant than touching the decaying flesh of the leper. Yet Jesus does touch him. He makes it a point to touch him. He goes beyond what is strictly necessary because his focus is love. He wants to show us that his love is super abundant. He doesn't measure out his love bit by bit. He pours it out like Niagara Falls. And Jesus touched that leper for our sake, just as he suffered his passion and death for our sake. He knows how hard it can be for us to come to him with our wounds, our sins, our weaknesses. So he makes it easier for us. Jesus wants to forgive us, give us a fresh start as often as we need it if only we give him the chance. Now, leprosy disfigures the body. It disfigures the body and slowly takes over and ultimately ends in death. Now, theologians and spiritual writers have viewed this Old Testament conception of leprosy as a symbol of sin. Sin is a kind of spiritual leprosy. It disfigures our souls and spreads to every corner of our lives. It destroys us and destroys our ability to relate to other people. Sin cuts us off from the purpose of life and also cuts us off from our role in human society, cuts us off from our close community, our church family. Just as leprosy starts small and grows, one sin, one betrayal of our conscience, one compromise with church teaching can easily become a spark that starts a spiritual forest fire. Now, I suspect Jesus touched this man to teach his disciples and us a lesson. In effect, Jesus was saying, if I can touch this unclean man, this sinner, this outcast, 
who must be separated from the community by law, then you too can touch, you can welcome, even embrace the outcasts that you encounter. And that is exactly what this St. Valentine's Day gospel challenges us to do. Not just today, but every day. It challenges us to find the outcasts in our families, the difficult people at work, the person who doesn't look like we want them to look. All of these are in need of a healing touch. If not the touch of our hands, then the touch of our full presence, our smile, our kind and generous words. Why are we called to touch the outcast? We are called to be Christ's hands, feet, eyes, and ears on earth. And salvation is experienced most fully in community. The community of a loving relationship between husband and wife, among family members, among family members in a loving and caring religious community, in a, in a society that truly has compassion for the outcast. This is where God's saving presence is experienced. God's love remains constant and flows through our touch. It reminds us and reassures those who feel unlovable that they are deeply and intensely loved by God. But the leper in today's gospel reminds us that we too at times feel like outcasts. At times, each of us feels separated from God. So we too are in need of healing. The marvelous reality is that Christ continues to touch us. And he's not limited to the physical hands that touch the leper. He touches us in mysterious ways with the hands of his glorified body. He touches us when we turn to him in prayer. He touches us when we take the risk of reconciliation. None of our hidden leprosies surprise or repel him. He knows us too well. He loves us too unconditionally. When Jesus reaches out and touches this leper and heals him, when he reaches out and touches us and heals us, it is much more than just another miracle. It is a revelation of Christ's entire mission. Jesus touches us when we receive him in the Eucharist. And by turning our hearts and minds to Jesus, we are saying, if you choose, you can heal me. And he says without reservation, I do choose, be healed. So Jesus is the Redeemer, the Savior. He is the one who comes into this fallen, sin-infected world, and with the power of his mercy and grace, he cleanses it and gives it a new start. And he does the same thing with each and every one of our lives as often as we need it. Jesus came, and he still comes, not to condemn, but to save. So today is St. Valentine's Day, not just Valentine's Day, St. Valentine's Day. And what a gospel of love is, what a gospel of love this is, make no mistake, I am all in favor of the hearts and the chocolates and the love cards and the flowers, all the symbols of this day. But I am more in favor of those loving gestures, the reaching out to those struggling with their individual crosses the sharing of a smile, a kind look or word. I'm in favor of letting these gestures represent the ultimate love, the love of God. The Lord be with you. And my almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And let us go in peace. Mm -hmm.